Hello, my name's Henry Stanier and I'm the Monitoring and Research Officer for the Wildlife Trust up at the Great Fen and as part of Cambridge Photography Week I'll be giving you a bit of an update. Well, it's been an interesting year which actually started at the end of last year when we had floods. You all probably experienced these but up at the Great Fen we had high water levels at Wood Walton Fen in particular both at the end of December and also this year as well. This is a photograph of the Rothschild bungalow up at Wood Walton Fen and its stilts were knee deep in water but since then the water levels have gone down and we are as we have been for a while now open for business. Uh, the Great Fen is all about change in fact and if we look back to the 1800s when the area was originally drained you can now see how much we've gone through as the land levels have dropped and you'll see these two posts at Home Fen which were buried flush with the ground and now over four meters high so well above ground level and it's a fascinating insight into our impact on our environment. If you want to go to the Great Fen particularly the Home Fen posts you'll see now that the roads have been resurfaced in the northern part of the Great Fen work's been done recently and not only are the hides all open but also it's much easier to get to and from the different parts of the Great Fen thanks to the fact that repairs have been made on these roads. If you haven't been to the Great Fen before we're north of Huntingdon, south of Peterborough in the county of Cambridgeshire and well we're only about 20 miles as a buzzard flies from Cambridge. We're one of a number of living landscape projects in the region led by the Wildlife Trust and although the Great Fen isn't the biggest by any means it's uh, from our point of view perfectly formed. The objective with the Great Fen is to purchase 3,700 hectares of land. It will become a mosaic of fenland and fenage habitats and link the two national nature reserves in the area of Home Fen and Wood Walton Fen in a 50 to 100 year time scale, ultimately creating an area three miles wide and nearly seven miles long. The partners working together on this big idea are the local wildlife trust for Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire and Northamptonshire, Natural England who manage Wood Walton Fen and Home Fen, uh, the middle level commissioners who are involved in the drainage of the area, the local district council of Huntingdonshire and the Environment Agency. They've been working together on the project since 2001 when it was launched and in those 20 years we've had funding from the lottery which has helped to really push the purchase of the land ahead so that now we own over 2,000 hectares, over 55% of the target land to be purchased and that means that as we progress with our restoration we've now got over 1,200 hectares of land in that state advancing restoration. If you add in the two national nature reserves then we've got over 1,700 hectares of land and if you look at the map you'll see the two dark green areas of the national nature reserves are marked Home Fen in the north and Wood Walton Fen in the south with the east coast main line on the western boundary and to the west of that the A1. The green filling up most of the northern part of the Great Fen is the land under restoration with a bit of that land around the northern part and to the west of Wood Walton Fen and then the rest of the land to the south is yet to be purchased. So where can you go in the Great Fen? Well this map shows in yellow quite a lot of the trails that you can walk. We have kilometres and kilometres of trails. There's a number of places you can visit from the countryside centre to the east of Wood Walton Fen up to Home Fen. There are new hides that have been put in place over the years that we've been active and from a photographer's point of view then there's a lot of opportunity to visit and try out your field skills and see what you can capture. The jewels in the crown are of course the two national nature reserves. Wood Walton Fen 
is over 200 hectares in size and a mixture of reed bed, scrub and woodland. It's a site of special scientific interest as well as a National Nature Reserve, a Ramsar site and a special area of conservation. It is a very sensitive site and so we do hope that you'll respect the wildlife there and the habitats. It's a site that's open all year round but you can't walk dogs on site. Uh, the other jewel in the crown is of course home fen which I mentioned earlier. It is the largest birch woodland in lowland England and has a number of large meres, these very shallow lakes that we have in the fens with them as well. So not only can you go for wildlife in the woodlands but also look out for wetland wildlife as well. It too is a national nature reserve at nearly 270 hectares in size, a site of special scientific interest and one of the first geological sites in the Cambridgeshire area, certainly the first local geological site in the Fens because that area, the area of the former Whittlesea Mere, is very diverse geologically and that has now been recognised through this notification process. If you look at the map on the Great Fen website, you'll see all sorts of information to help you guide your visits. You'll see here Home Fen is marked with the various car parking spaces and also the light green is all the land under restoration which has trails either around or around the perimeter or through them. Places like Rhine's Rebed where Trundlemere Lookout is located or Engine Farm with the Northern Loop which I'll mention later or New Decoy with the Dragonfly Trail. As I said, access has improved recently and this is the main road going from Home Fen East past Rhymes Rebed, Kester's Docking and to Engine Farm. So good opportunity both to spot wildlife from the roadside in your car but also to park up as we advise you to do in the little car parks that have been created and eventually more will be on the way. If you decide to go in the evening then of course we do have dark sky status. We have very little light pollution in the Great Fen and certainly at the heart of the Fen, places like New Decoy and the information point there, you can go for a nice evening walk on the Dragonfly Trail and enjoy the lovely stars in a winter sky. You never know what you'll come across. This was a red kite that was photographed using a trail camera uh, courtesy of Campkins a couple of years ago. And it is just amazing to see such big birds, a very familiar sight now in the Great Fen and the surrounding countryside and of course another indication of how things can change. The Great Fen is well known for its raptors now. I teach raptor identification courses on site because it's so good and quite a lot of photographers will be visiting the Great Fen in the coming months as our wintering birds start to arrive. We've already had raptors turning up and it won't be long before hopefully shorted owl numbers, always a big draw, will start to increase. So look out on our website, Twitter, other social media for the latest news. If you do visit, then please of course respect the countryside, follow the countryside code. There are other people living and working in the Great Fen. Please avoid parking in gateways and driveways leave gates as you find them and enjoy the pathways but do give way to others where it's narrow. Ultimately we hope you don't leave any trace of your visit but just take away happy memories and hopefully a few excellent photographs but please bear in mind we don't have fires on site and take home all your litter. Uh, please keep your dogs under control and certainly be aware that we have livestock on a lot of the fen at this time of year and as I mentioned earlier no dogs are allowed on Wood Walton Fen. But hopefully you'll be able to enjoy the site, use some of the local information that's cited there, the signage that we spend a lot of time thinking about and updating for your benefit so you can really make the most of your visit. If you do decide to visit in the next month or so then we've got our big wild walk coming up 25th to the 31st of October and you can help the Wildlife Trusts tackle the nature and climate emergency. So check out our website for more information on this. The Great Fen is 
wonderful place to visit at various times of year. The Northern Loop in spring and early summer is excellent for wildflowers and also insects. So it's worth paying a visit to that. At this time of year, you've got the Northern Loop in the northern part of the Great Fen. You've also got the Last of the Mears Trail and you've also got the Dragonfly Trail that I mentioned earlier. And as you can see from this map here, these are all marked with their own car parks. The Dragonfly Trail and the Last of the Mears you can access using the parking at New Decoy, the information point on the B660 between the villages of Home and Ramsey St Mary's. And then further north, as I mentioned earlier, you can access the Northern Loop with its own little car park in the southeast of the walk. That's a view you'll get at the moment if you go up to the Northern Loop. Uh, very good for birds and mammals at this time of year. Moving through, and only last week I was photographing Wheatia, one, a, a number of species of chat that you'll see using the open tracks for feeding. We have a lot of species at the Great Fen, over 160 now in fact, and the bird species, they're moving through at this time of year, others are arriving for the winter. We have 81 species breeding during the spring and summer, and so again, it gives you some idea of the diversity we have and the opportunities for taking photographs. A lot of mammals, both small and large. Chinese water deer are another draw at this time of year. As the vegetation starts to die back, we've had the hay meadows cut, the livestock stock is coming back on, then that means it's a bit easier to spot these very enigmatic deer species. Water voles are also common in the ditches, so listen out for that familiar plop as one of them dives into the water. And do send your records in if you get any sightings. The big skies are an important part of the fens, and especially so at the Great Fen. The raptors, as I mentioned, will now be getting more and more interesting and more and more opportunities to look out to see what's turning up. We've gone through now the transition of our summer visitors leaving. The hobbies, which have been seen relatively recently, are now moving away. And this gives way to more peregrines hunting birds over the open fields and also merlin, both species of which have been spotted just in the last week. If you like something more secluded, then visit the Countryside Centre at Ramsey Heights and walk the trails there, the boardwalks, and watch out for kingfishers feeding over the little ponds in the clay pits. More's coming up at the Great Fen. There's always something new. If you go to the northern part of Home Fen and look out through the Wildlife Trust hide at Trundlemere over what used to be the bed of Whittlesea Mere, you'll see a lot of restoration work has gone on in the past. It's a great view as to how we've been ch changing the landscape and the newer Trundlemere scrape will be getting bigger, bigger in the coming weeks. And so hopefully as the water levels will begin to rise in the coming weeks as well, there'll be waders and other species coming in to visit this enlarged feature. Current monitoring research projects running include colour ringing of the stone chats. The stone chats have been arriving for their winter resort up at the Great Fen and while some will be passing through many will stay. Certainly since the beginning of September they've started to appear again and we've been colour ringing them again. So look out for birds with colour rings on their legs. If you spot them please report back to us or even take a photograph and send it in to us. We'd love to hear what you are seeing. If you'd like to support us in other ways, then of course, if you're not a member of the Wildlife Trust, do think about membership or, or simply make a donation and check out our website for that. If you'd like more information about the Great Fen, then next month I'm doing a talk about a year in my life up at the Great Fen, how I carry out my daily tasks through the course of a year, how I got into conservation, and also my thoughts on what's going to happen in the future. 
and if you'd like to know more about the stone chats then I'll be doing another online talk this time about the stone chat colour ringing project for our Cambridge local group at the end of next month so again check out both the Great Fen website or the Wildlife Trust for Bedfordshire, Cambridge and Northamptonshire Wildlife Trust get involved pay us a visit and we might see you up there. Thanks very much.